All right, I woke up and it was like 30 degrees out and it was snowing. Got out here and uh, all the snow melted, so that's good. At least it's getting a little bit warmer during the day. But we've got the heated garage, so that's nice. Unlike last winter where um, we were freezing our butt off every day, right? So anyway, new video today for you guys. So this is a 2007 TRX 450. You can see the van right here. Tenth number in is a seven, as you can see. So it is in fact a 2007. This one has some major issues with it. I'll quick try to start it up for you guys. You can kind of hear what it sounds like here. So as you can see, the starter just spins. It's not catching at all. So I'm thinking it's a one-way bearing. A few subscribers dropped this thing off and they said they bought this thing for a pretty good deal. I think it was like 1800 bucks maybe. But uh, they bought it and uh, they had a bump started to get it running. And then they said once it was running, you hit the throttle and it would die right away. So not only does it not start by itself, it um, doesn't run very well. So our goal today is to get it to start up by itself and uh, try to tune this thing so that it runs better or try to figure out why it's not running. Maybe there's like a sensor on, a switch that's not supposed to be on. I don't know. We're gonna dig into it today and try to figure it out. Um, I guess we're going to start with the one-way bearing. I believe that's right underneath here. Well, actually, it's going to be underneath the other cover, which sucks. So I think the one-way bearing is going to be right underneath here. And it's actually like a clutch underneath there, so that should be exciting. I did order a new one up, and it came in the mail. So this is what it looks like. Hopefully it's the right one. I'm hoping that's the issue, but let's just try it one more time. See, it sometimes catches, sometimes not. Listen to it. Yeah, that does not like to catch. So, I guess without further ado, let's jump into it. See if we can fix this one up and then take it for a rip. So this looks like a pretty nice quad. Otherwise, everything is pretty much sound on it. Chain sprockets look pretty good. Engine looks really clean. Looks like it was rebuilt at one point with the green gaskets you can see. Looks like it maybe had a full engine rebuild at one point, possibly, or just the top end. But um, you can see all the green gaskets in there. Engine doesn't leak at all, no fluids leaking at all. Oil is topped off. That thing is filled up all the way with oil. So, you know, that's good. I was gonna check the coolant quick, just to make sure that looks good. Before we uh, dig into it any further. And I also kinda wanna check and see if the oil is milky. Just to make sure that's all good. See if I can get this cap off, it's kind of tricky. <laughs> Which way does it go here? <laughs> we might have to take the plastics off to get to that. <laughs> so we'll leave that on. Looks like the cap might be cracked right there. But um, let's take a dipstick, check the oil first, and then we're gonna have to drain the oil to take off the right side clutch cover. Let's see what that oil looks like in here. Oh yeah, that's clear, not milky at all. So that's good. So our head gaskets should be holding, and our water pump seal 
should be good to go. All right, let's go to the other side and start tearing into this side. We have to, in order to get this off, take the brake off. Um, I think the pipe can stay on there. We've got to drain the coolant out right here. And I think that's pretty much it. The drain bolt for the oil is actually right in the center of the engine, so it's right there on this model. Let's try to crack that loose, see what this oil looks like here. Need the breaker bar for that bad boy. All right, I got the breaker bar. Oh, that was easy with the breaker bar. <laughs> Yeah, she's a little rough. Not the clearest oil in the world there. Definitely needs to be changed out. It's not horrible, but could be better. All right, we're at the right side of the machine here. Let me get this coolant drained out. It's coming out of there. Oh, I gotta get this cap off. <laughs> Which is tough to do. Let's see if I can get her off. All right, cap does not want to come off here. So let this drain for a little bit. Looks like there's just water in there. Doesn't look like coolant. It's clear. All right, we'll let that drain out and then work on getting this cover off here. All right, all the coolant is drained out. Hoses are off on this side. Let's get the brake off on this side over here. It almost looks like somebody was in here because the piece of plastic came right off. It wasn't bolted on. So I wonder if they were in here already and tried to uh, fix it, couldn't fix it. Not too sure. Let's start taking some of these off. And you know, maybe when they rebuilt this thing, they put it back together wrong. Well. Cover's already kind of coming off, so that's a good sign too. Shouldn't be too hard of one. One more right here. I think we can get the cover off. A whole bunch of oil pouring out. Okay. Don't want to rip that gasket. Did they already rip it? Can't tell. No, didn't rip it yet. Bunch of oil pouring out of there though. There's the inside of the cover, looking pretty good. There's a couple metal shavings right here. Just metallic -y flakes on there. 
Nothing too serious yet. We saved the gasket, so that was good. And it might not be the one-way bearing. It could be something worn out or something broken. Or Look at this bolt. That bolt's completely backed out right there. Huh. That might be the problem right there. Look at that. Look at that bolt right there. It's supposed to be like that one. It's like a big gap in there. Look at how much that's backed out. That whole thing can move right there. So I'm guessing when you try to spin it, I guess we can actually look at it and see what happens here. Let's just kind of see what happens when we hit the start button. When you hit it, that that gear right there is just spinning around. See that? Yeah. So something messed up in here. Is that the one my bearing right here? Yeah, I think that is right there. So that should not be spinning. Do you see that one spinning? Sometimes catches, sometimes not. I think that's a problem. But that backed out bolt is not supposed to be like that either. That could be why it failed in the first place, so. We'll get this clutch off of here. Clutch plates all look good. All right. Yeah, the person that rebuilt it never put the nut lockers back on. You can see these tabs are supposed to be bent over. Never bent those back. So that's why stuff is backing out. All right, we've got the nut. Got a couple washers behind here. One like that. And then the lock one. Clutch should come off now. This bearing just stays behind there like that. So this is the bolt. Yeah, look at you can see it just coming right out. <laughs> so that was out quite a ways, which is not good because that holds that gear on there. See that? Not good at all. That definitely needs to be tight in there. And it was not. We're gonna put some thread locker on there and twist that back in. You know, I wonder if they used too big of a bolt. Nope, that fits all the way in. So I just didn't put thread locker on it. So I think our issue is this. So this is spinning these gears. 
right here, and it's, here's the one-way bearing, right here. So let's get that off of there. Let's see what that looks like in there. All right, we're gonna see if we can get this nut off of here. All right, so I finally got this thing to break free with the breaker bar. So what it did was use two pennies, stuck these between the gears, the teeth, and then I was able to take the breaker bar, break that free. It is not reverse thread. There's the one-way bearing right there. Got the quarter in there too. <laughs> All right, so I have the old one-way bearing here. Check this out. So what's supposed to happen is this is only supposed to spin one way. And you can see it spins both ways. So it gets caught a little bit sometimes, but most of the time it spins both ways. So it gets caught sometimes, but look at sometimes it gets caught, sometimes not. <laughs> See that? So it spins that way. Oh, see, it was spinning that way. It's not supposed to spin that way at all, it's supposed to get caught. And here is the new one, which it seems like it's not fitting on there properly. But here's the new one. That's what it's supposed to be like. See how it spins one way? It spins that way, it doesn't spin the other way. It doesn't spin that way. So that's what that's supposed to feel like. <laughs> so it's definitely the one way bearing that's bad. All right, the new one was a tight fit, but I got it. Got it on there. Just had to tap it on the rest of the way there. So now this lines up with the dot there. I believe. Tighten down to 80 foot pounds. All right, we're gonna put some blue Loctite on the threads right there. We don't wanna put red because we eventually wanna take them back out. So blue, we'll tighten them up, but it'll allow us to take them back out. So let's get that one on. We'll do all of them in blue. Yeah, those were all really loose. Had zero torque on those. All right, we got the cover back on. Everything looks good over there. Let's go over to the other side. I'm gonna add some oil to this thing. It takes 800 milliliters. And there's, you can see the high and low mark on the window right here. I'm just gonna fill it up to the high mark. See what happens here. Oh yeah. That's definitely working. Then over here at this side, um, we're gonna put 800 milliliters in this side. So don't don't forget to do both sides.
All right, so the gas on off is right there. Turn that to reserve. Where is the choke on this? Choke is out. That's good to go. All right, turn this thing to on. I just want to check and see if the lights work. Lights work, cool. chattering in the top end see if she fires back up but yeah it's not running right for sure going on. Let's see if the carb's leaking at all. Oh yeah, carb's leaking. Look at that. This carb is leaking pretty good. Almost sounds like it's flooding out. Alright, we'll turn off that gas there. So it rubs out sometimes, but sometimes doesn't. So it's almost like it's choking itself out. Um, I did have the choke on still. Let's try it without the choke. Does it run better with the choke or without? If it runs better with, we know it's running too rich and it's probably flooding. and turn it off very weird could be a spark plug as well but I think what we're gonna do is start with the carburetor first get that out of there see why it's leaking and then go from there all right in order to get to the carburetor let's get the gas tank off and um, these side plastics we'll get that out of the way all right we got the tank off there's the carburetor right there we pretty much have it out um, these two wires Plug-ins go into the ones right there. 
So make sure you take those out. The throttle's connected to here. We have to take off that cover and just detach that, and then this whole carburetor can pull right out. So we'll do that, and then we'll get this in the bench and take a look at it, uh, figure out why this thing's leaking. All right, here's the carb. Let's open it up and see what's going on. What do you guys think? It's getting stuck on something. Oh. The I already measured this too. This was uh, three turns out for the fuel screw. This is one of those easy adjusts. Looks pretty clean. Looks really clean actually. Not bad. Let's see what kind of jets we're running to. Everything's stock on this thing as far as I know, unless they put a big bore in it. But we'll have to look up the stock jetting too. So this one's a 42 pilot. Pretty clogged up. I can't blow through it. There we go. Cleared out finally. Let's see what the starter jet is here. That one is a 75. That one's clear. Little starter jet. And then we'll get the main out. See what that one is. The main is a 120. That seems really small, doesn't it? I think that's too small. We'll have to see. A 120 seems really small for a main for a 450. That can't be right, can it? All right, everything is looking perfect so far. Floats look good, needle looks good. Still rubbery at the tip. So we're gonna do some investigating and we'll see why this thing was leaking. I'll come back once I figure it out. All right, we got the carburetor back on. So the float height was a little bit off, but the needle and the seat were perfect. I uh, poured some gas in the carburetor and pushed up on the float and uh, it was shutting off the gas, so I'm like, well, let's adjust the float height just like about a millimeter, and that seemed to fix it, so it doesn't leak any more gas out of the carburetor, but it still runs like crap. So we're gonna check the spark plug next and see what's going on with that. The spark plug is right down here, right in there, you can see it. All right, here is the old plug. You can see pretty black. So it's running pretty rich. So it definitely could be fouled. We'll try a new we'll try a new plug and see if that works. Alright, so this takes an IFR 7L11 iridium plug. All I had at the store was the Autolite and that same kind. So we'll install that one. Alright, new plug is in there. Let's see if she'll fire up with the new plug.
All right, she does not want to start now. So what we're going to do is a quick compression test and then we are going to check the valves. So let's see why this thing won't start. All right, we're going to do a compression test here. To me, it almost sounds like it's the, the rod bearing going. It's very squeaky sounding. And the way it shuts off randomly like that, I, I think it might be the, the rod bearing. But I'm not sure. We'll do a compression test. See if that tells us anything. We'll go from there. It just sounds really weird. It's hard to explain. Okay, we're gonna do throttle open. You guys keep an eye on the gauge there. Let's zoom in there a little bit. Let's see if you guys can see that or not. All right, throttle open. Just see what happens. See what we get for compression. Put the charger on it. Throttle open. Let's get about. 110 pounds of compression. So that is enough to run, but I don't think it's gonna run well with that. We'll check and see if that, uh, we'll check and see what it's supposed to have with the decompression mechanism. That might be enough. All right, so I looked it up, um, and this thing should have about 108 with the decompression. So we're right in that range, we're 110. So I don't think it's low on compression. I'm wondering if somebody timed it wrong. You can see there's brand new gaskets, so I'm guessing it was rebuilt at one point. So let's try to get this thing to top dead center and just check the timing, check the valves, go over all that fun stuff. All right, let's get this detached here. And we're looking for a T, I believe. And this one, or just a line, we'll see. All right, got those bolts off. This should just pull right off, like so. All right, that's looking good. Bunch of oil in it yet, that's good. All right, see how the cam chain feels? Not bad, that looks good. Decompression mechanism isn't there yet. Looking pretty good, nice and tight. Cams look good. I'll have to see what these valves are at. So we'll spin this over a couple times. Until we can see tap dead center here. All right, we got it to tap dead center here. See so if you guys can see it in there. The line right there. Let me go up here. Lobes are pointing that way. And then it looks like the cam mark right there. The other ones over there are parallel to the surface of the head. So those are perfect. So timing on this looks really good. Perfectly timed. All right, so timing on this side's good. Let's check the timing on this side. So down here, there was an Allen cap right there. And there's actually a little divot right there. See the little, right there. That should line up with the arrow right there on the case. And it does in fact line up. You can see it lines up perfectly. So, timing is spot on. All right, valves for the intake are perfect. Those are at 0 0.006, and the exhausts are at 0 0.11. So those are all good to go. Timing's good to go. We have some other problems uh, that we have to figure out. So, I'm really not quite sure what it would be at this point. <laughs> it's gotta be something with the carburetor. I don't know if there's a sensor that's going off. I'm gonna check the wiring, make sure everything's good there. Um, just looking at everything. Everything looks stock on it, you know? So nothing looks like it was moved ever. Um, 
Yeah, very, very weird, isn't it? So we'll put everything back together and uh, I think we're gonna try working on the carb some more. And maybe there's just a sensor that's off on this thing. I got it to do that by unplugging the switch right there. So it seems better when I did that. But it's still not idling the way I want it to. But it's definitely better. So we're making progress. <laughs> I don't know. That was a throttle switch that I unplugged. So maybe that was the culprit. We'll dig into it some more and uh, we'll keep on trying this thing. Um, it's gotta be something with the carburetor, it just has to be. All right, so I just talked to the owner of this quad and I asked him a couple questions. I, I uh, asked him to contact the seller of this quad and it turns out that the seller actually rebuilt this about 12 hours ago, 12 hours ride time ago. And uh, he said just started having issues about 12 hours after the rebuild. So he rebuilt it recently and he didn't have issues until 12 hours after. Which is kind of telling me that maybe it's the rod bearing. I, I just kind of have a feeling it is. It just sounds rough in the engine. Um, sounds like there's a little bit of a knock in there. Um, kind of sounds crunchy. Um, I don't really know what could have gotten messed up within those 12 hours of riding. <sighs> we did the carb clean. We looked at all the settings on the, on the carburetor, everything's perfect. Brand new oil, brand new coolant, valves check out, timing checks out, compression checks out. So it's like what is really left to check, you know? So I think what we're gonna do is maybe tear down the whole thing next video and just try to find out what's going on. What we might do before that is try to rejet it and just see if jets change uh, the way it runs. If it does, we know there's an air leak somewhere or something's off because it used to run good with these jets. So something's going on. I'm not really quite sure what it is. It's a mystery. So if anyone has any idea, leave a comment down below. If you've ever experienced something like this with the TRX 450s, this one's a 2007. So it does have the throttle sensor on it, a couple of them on the carburetor. So. It's just a pain to deal with. We've checked everything, everything checks out. So I'm leaning towards either carburetor or uh, that rod bearing. So what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. If you guessed right, I will pin your comment next video. This one's got me stumped. I'm gonna go do some research into this thing and really just try to figure this thing out before tearing it down. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next one. It's always a mystery on these old ones. <laughs> Until next time, we are out.